Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's eight o'clock on Wednesday the 3rd of May. I'm reading the Church of England's Common Worship Daily Prayer, Morning Prayer during Easter season, which we'll find in the book towards the beginning after prayer during the day. Online at Arima's Daily Prayer on the Church of England's website, downloadable app for Apple or Android devices. You are welcome to join me in the building, eight and six most days, or by Zoom, code on the Bly Church's website and Facebook page. Uh, video stays up on Facebook and the audio is on my Dominic Dobell YouTube channel. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Blessed be God for ever. The Easter anthems, Christ our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the appointed time this morning is number 135. You'll find it at the back of the book or by scrolling on 135. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Alleluia. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. You that stand in the house of the Lord in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Make music to his name, for it is lovely. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, and Israel for his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. The Lord does whatever he pleases in heaven and on earth, in the seas and in all the deeps. He brings up the clouds from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning with the rain and brings the winds out of his treasuries. He smote the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn of man and beast. He sent signs and wonders into your midst, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his servants. He smote many nations and slew mighty kings, Sion, king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan. He gave their land as a heritage, <coughs> a heritage for, his, for Israel, his people. Your name, O Lord, endures forever and shall be remembered through all generations. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols 
of the nations are but silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes have they but cannot see, they have ears but cannot hear, neither is there any breath in their mouths. Those who make them shall become like them, and so will all who put their trust in them. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel, O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi, you who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord from Zion, who dwells in Jerusalem. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Scrolling past our first reading to the Canticle, the Song of Moses and Miriam, turning back to the same in morning prayer during Easter season. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. Uh, first Bible reading that isn't Psalm, Deuteronomy 10 from 12. Deuteronomy is one of the early books in the Bible, so you turn to the beginning in the Hebrew Scriptures, you'll find the first five, the Torah of the Law. Genesis, Exodus, etc. Gen- Deuteronomy is the fifth of those. <clears throat> Once you find Deuteronomy, you will look at the large number 10 at the head of the paragraph. That's chapter number 10. And the small numbers in the text are the verses. We're starting at 12 today. Deuteronomy 10 from 12. Scroll back a little from the canticle we read a moment ago to find it online. So now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Only to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his decrees that I am commanding you today for your own well-being. Although heaven and the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord your God, the earth with all that is in it, yet the Lord set his heart in love on your ancestors alone, and chose you, their descendants, after them, out of all the peoples, as it is today. Circumcise then the foreskin of your heart, and do not be stubborn any longer, for the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, who loves the strangers, providing them with food and clothing, and you shall also love the stranger, for you are strange in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, him alone you shall worship, to him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise, he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. Your ancestors went down to Egypt, 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in heaven. (coughs) (coughs) So, although it's set as um, Moses' valedictory, encouraging God's people to live right as they go into the promised land, as he dies, he's not allowed to go in with them because he struck the rock too many times or something, um, which is a bit of a shame, a warning to those who have been called into leadership or ministry in church or elsewhere that we might not actually fulfil that which we set out to do. His job was to lead his people into Egypt. He got them as far as the border, but then he wasn't allowed to go any further, which uh, seems a crying shame to me. Um, and I'm not quite sure it's one of those sort of judgments that I don't quite, quite grasp. <clears throat> However, he says to them, sort yourselves out, stick with the law and all will be well. And this is part and, and a part of that. What's interesting is uh, to consider whether it was written uh, as God's people coming out of exile. <clears throat> so those who were in charge then wanted to restore an understanding of heritage, restore their religious practices, restore them as an, an identity within their people to keep them sort of containable, controllable. <coughs> um, so these oral traditions may well have been penned then. 
<coughs> and so it's just exactly a similar uh, situation. The people leaving slavery going into a promised land, the people leaving exile going back to their land. So it's theirs, but it will be different. It will be new. It will be a challenge. They've got to rebuild, reconstruct, learn how to live again as society and community, etc. Uh, re-establish relations with uh, neighbouring peoples. And uh, here we're told, interestingly, circumcise not the foreskin of your uh, penises, but the foreskin of your hearts. I'm reminded of uh, what, how Paul writes in the letters in the Greek scriptures. Uh, it's not just about that external sign, it's internal sign. And unless the internal sign has been undertaken, then the external sacrament is of no worth, he argues, though he does get people circumcised if it's going to ease the passage of the gospel. And um, <clears throat> here we're t- an, an example of the foreskin for hearts being circumcised is, and this is written by and for Jews, notice, um, just as you have suffered injustice, so you should not suffer others to experience it. Um, look after strangers, orphans, widows. Just as you were strangers, you shall look, love the stranger, for you were strange in the land of Egypt. It says that in particular. It, also, it talks about strangers, I think, before. The Lord loves strangers, but then it reiterates, you were strangers, so love strangers. Is that because they're moving into a land, going back to their land, and so there will be strangers there? Is it because they have been being in a land full of strangers as exiles? But uh, let us take that to heart too in our own country, uh, in our own town, in our families, in our own selves, as we consider how we feel about uh, orphans, widows, strangers. We might have other words for them that make it easier to hate them in our own day. But uh, if we want to be on God's side, we need to love and support the excluded and the hated. Uh, I would say, sadly, if you're looking for credibility and privilege and uh, welcome at the top table, sometimes we need to um, speak truth to power. And that's our calling. Ephesians 5, 1 to 14 is our second Bible reading. Let's scroll onto it if we're following electronically. In a holy Bible, it's in the middle of the second covenant. So if you turn two thirds of the way through, you'll hit the Gospels. <clears throat> Halfway through that last third, we find that set of letters written to the smaller congregations. A-E-I-O-U, Galatians, Ephesians. I'm looking for the book of Ephesians. We're looking at the large number 5 at the head of the paragraph, chapter 5. Small numbers in the text, verses 1 to 14. Scroll onto it if you're following electronically. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not even be mentioned among you as is proper among the saints. Entirely out of places of scenes, silly and vulgar talk, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person or one who is greedy, that is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be associated with them. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention <coughs> what such people do secretly. But everything exposed to the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, sleep and wake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And so a continuation of um, what we find in much of this letter <coughs> is an instruction, uh, an invitation, an explanation of how to live right. <coughs> and uh, this is partly due to the fact that this is a largely Gentile background church. There would have been Jews amongst them, but it's largely Gentile background. So some of the things that perhaps would have been anathema to Jewish background believers would be considered perhaps normal in the standard culture of those who've come to faith um, in the Messiah or the Christ in this community. And uh, maybe Paul has just become aware on visiting them that uh, they're just with the lads when they're out and about drinking, let's say, and they don't necessarily stand up for what is right, true and just. They just go along with the mockery of others, perhaps, um, with the denigration, the bullying, um, maybe worse, of those amongst whom they live, and uh, lack of faithfulness, and so he's encouraging them to live right. Uh, some of it may be down to the fact that they now don't think they need to submit to Caesar because God is their um, ruler. Maybe because they're married to God, they don't need to consider their spouse. Maybe because they're free in God, they don't have to submit to their masters, so that's sort of possibly part of this. But learning how to live in their new community, being new creation, being born again, all things are new. <coughs> 
and it's interesting to hold this alongside some of those things where Paul says it's okay to do what you like um, because we're forgiven um, and uh, nobody's going to judge any of us. Um, so this is quite an interesting sort of balancing uh, instruction here, going as far as not uh, engaging in silly talk. I'm afraid we're full of that at home, if not elsewhere. We have to, I guess, understand exactly what it is that he's meaning here. I'm sure he doesn't mean that we're not allowed to tell jokes, etc., etc., but to be wary, I guess, of our tongue and the effects of what we say and some of the, the humour that we have may not be entirely appropriate at all or in circum- certain circumstances. Interesting that greed opens and closes that paragraph. But greed must not even be mentioned among you. And then in concluding, one who is greedy has no inheritance in the kingdom of God, or to rule under the rule of uh, God. And uh, the second paragraph sort of develops that, what is quite a straightforward um, list of rules um, to the reason why. Don't let anyone deceive you with empty words because you are caught up in God. It's one of those sort of almost Johannine. Now in the Lord you are light to live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good, right and true. To find out what is pleasing, don't take part in unfruitful works of darkness, but expose them. Everything exposed in the light becomes visible, everything that becomes visible is light. Just an extraordinary sort of meditation on uh, what light means. Lightness of heart, um, illumination, uh, direction and guidance. And so that's a sort of, if you like, a theological exposition of the previous much more sort of concrete and uh, practical explanation of how to live. So depending on your learning style, it's either don't touch that, it's hot, or um, think about the consequences to um, how you might feel if you um, scold yourself and how might others feel about it. Is it better to be pain-free and uh, whole or injured? and uh, susceptible to infection. How might that affect those among whom you live? So to the responsory back in a morning prayer during Easter season. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? The Song of Zechariah. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born in the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. <clears throat> Source, sun, essence, one in three, three in one. We come to you at the beginning of this day, and uh, we recognise that you are calling us as pilgrim people <clears throat> to a newness of life, always. <clears throat> and uh, so we... Thank you for that call and recognise the challenge of that responsibility and we thank you for your grace and your spirit that enables us to be the people we should be. Help us to speak and act as we ought to those who are uh, refugees, (coughs) to those who are gender neutral, or who have uh, gender preferences, uh, which may not be ours. (coughs) For those who rely on support, at the expense of the taxpayer or family and friends. May we stand up for and with those who are excluded, imprisoned in their own land, brutalised. We pray for your grace and your mercy for all who are subject to hatred and ostracism. 
to domestic abuse. We pray for their freedom, their release, for justice to be done and for where we are able as church to be on the right side of the case. Well, Council of Churches, prayers this week for Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. We thank for the rich natural resources of these nations and we pray for an end to clashes related to tribalism, traditionalism, traditionalism and modernisation. Oh, Christian Acts Research and Education have updated um, a week or two after it was stuck on the 22nd of April. Lord, our Redeemer, we ask you to raise up men and women of wisdom, courage and faith in our Parliament, civil service, professional communities who will apply Christian values principles and purposes within our national institutions <clears throat> and or at least integrity let's say <laughs> let's go as far as that perhaps we can all agree there <clears throat> and pray especially for those who are engaging personally and otherwise with the uh, local government elections here <clears throat> that those who may well not get in um, will be encouraged and supported alongside those that do so turning up the green christian prayer diary <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> but uh, not the April one. <coughs> Scrolling through to today's entry. Tonight is one of the online workshops, Faith in Fashion, Christian Perspectives on Unsustainable Clothing Practices with Tim Cooper. Yeah, few sermons are given on clothing, yet the fact is that yet the fact that it is among the most unsustainable industry sectors has an implication for everyone who buys and wears clothes. So we explore the evidence that it's unsustainable and consider ethical decisions and uncertainties that Christians and others face. This might be really more sustainable than cotton, for example. Uh, it's free, but you have to book Christian Green Christian website. <clears throat> Thank God for that initiative and the people who put those talks together. Um, and uh, we pray that many will watch, read, learn, and uh, make what they have become aware of. Uh, involve that in their activities uh, as people, families, and uh, churches and communities. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our uh, involvement and concern for the environment. And Pope Francis' prayer in that regard includes the lines, O God of the poor, help us rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. In our benefit cycle of prayer, we pray on Tuesday, uh, Wednesdays for teachers uh, at all levels, those who raise children, whether they're actually at home educating or not. We pray for those who are teaching in the schools. We pray for those who teach others um, maybe how to live independently, to relearn how to use parts of their bodies that have been damaged after strokes or <coughs> other accidents, how to get about having lost a limb or some other capacity. Pray for those who teach hobbies, skills and crafts to broaden and expand people's experience of life and opportunity of self-expression and uh, stretching and exercise. We pray that they will be encouraged as they see those they teach, learn more, flourish and grow and gain a certain amount of independence and confidence. We pray that they're um, employing arrangements will be sufficient and satisfactory for them that they too may enjoy fullness of life and satisfaction, uh, professional competence and satisfaction in their work. Pray for our people today for the wardens looking after the churches in the St Peter's group, John and Chris at St Peter's Holton, Jonathan at St Peter's Weniston, uh, Ginny at St Andrew Bramfield. Uh, and uh, Alison Whilst not warden anymore officially, uh, is uh, representative, uh, main point of contact at St Peter, uh, All Saints Blyford, and for Mike at St Peter's Thorrington, we pray a blessing <coughs> on them. We've got list of names for Holton's electoral role, Jill, Helen, Anthony, Dot, Betty, Mary, Diane, Marjorie, Jane, Julian, Linda, Eric, Phyllis, Edith, Janet, Jim and Jackie. And uh, at uh, Wenister will include Alison, also the Margaret, Broomfield, Goldsmith, Goldstone, Angela, Mary, Moira, Francis, Barry, Dorothy, Jane, Robert, Cyrilla, Colin, Jennifer, Felicity, Vivian Graham, Ruth, John, Sandy, David, Anna, Joanna, Jean, Suzanne, Clive, France, Anna, Colin, we pray a special blessing on those uh, within those names who are significantly poorly at the moment. 
We pray that they will know your presence and our support and the community will know how to deal with their loss as it increases in power as a number of significant people have died in that congregation and are dying as we speak. We pray that just as God's people were restored to their country after exile, so these congregations and those who are involved in maintaining those buildings will reach out to those amongst whom they live and welcome the stranger that they may continue to maintain that, those community buildings and use them for worship from time to time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Easter Collect from the Book of God of Life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. We invite those joining us on YouTube.